What's up guys, welcome back to Task Course Off-Road. Now, this is gonna be a very different video because we're gonna talk about how you afford Jeep parts while balling on a budget, and this is some tactics I used while I was in the Marine Corps. I did not make a lot of money. So, stay tuned, I hope you enjoy it. If you don't, I kind of understand. There's gonna be more normal content, but I thought this might be a good idea for you guys, so stick around, stay tuned. If you like the idea of this video or the topic of this video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any tips that I didn't mention in this video. Uh, I really appreciate it. It helps me out with the algorithm, and it helps me grow the channel and help me bring more stuff to you guys. Okay, so in the age of 2021 and 2020, and probably realistically from like 2010 on, most people don't cash their checks anymore. Everything's direct deposit, which means we just spend everything on our cards and we kind of don't think about it, especially when you're younger. So this, again, this video applies to more younger generation of Jeepers than it does to the older guys who've been around the block and also know how to budget a little better. So again, this is definitely directed towards like, I don't know, maybe like 26 and under people, not necessarily the older folks. So um, one thing I used to do is every single week I'd pull out I don't know, maybe like 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks, whatever I could kind of spare at the time, but I'd do it every week. And I'd hide it somewhere along my room, or I, I, I wouldn't keep it on my person. It wouldn't be in my wallet, it wouldn't be near me whatsoever, because if it was near me, I'd spend it. Because cash is fake money at this point, and no one thinks they actually, like whenever you have cash, it doesn't count because it's not in your bank account. So no one uses cash as actual money anymore, they just spend it. And with that logic, I would hide the cash away, forget it that I put it there. Obviously, after some time, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks a week, that occurs. You're creating a miniature savings account and by keeping it out of sight, out of mind, you're not really thinking about it. The only thinking of it that you're doing is you are just pulling it out of your bank account, putting it away. The way I do it is, you know, in the Marine Corps, we had to get haircuts every single week. My haircut cost me like five bucks. So I'd pull out 40 bucks, 50, 60 bucks, something like that. I'd give the guy, I think my haircut was five bucks, so I'd give him like seven bucks, so five and a $2 tip. And then all the leftovers from that, I would then put my little money stash and like, I don't know, a shoe box in my wall locker or something along those lines. And then that would be my savings account for buying Jeep parts. Obviously I didn't have this Jeep at the time, I had my two door uh, JK, insert picture right there of what that guy looked like. And that's, that's what, how I would afford that. Um, just saving up from time and time. And then, Everything kind of changed when I found this app. And I'm gonna screen record this, that way you guys can see what I'm talking about much better. But I'm gonna log into it first. So this app is called Acorns. So what this app does, which I don't have that setting featured up right now, but it gives you the ability to round up your purchases. So let's say I'm using my credit card, or my debit card for that matter, and I'm buying a cup of coffee because everyone buys coffee. Everyone buys something on their credit or debit card, gas for crying out loud, anything. Let's say the charge ends at $2.50, so it then rounds up to the nearest dollar. So it rounds up to that $2.50 to $3. It takes that 50 cents and then it invests it for you. You have to hit a minimum threshold of $5, so every 50 cents or 20 cents or 10 cents or even one cent will then accrue to the point of where it hits $5 and then it will buy uh, stocks in a little mutual fund for you. As you can see right now, I have $1,200 in my Acorns account. Right now, that is, uh, I have my manual roundup settings times three. So let's say I have, um, I buy something with 20 cents extra until it rounds up to the next dollar, so it invests 60 cents instead. It just hits that $5 threshold a little bit faster. Uh, I have the portfolio set to aggressive, which accrues me a little bit more money than it normally would, which honestly, I don't use this as an investment account. I use it as a savings account that I kind of forget about. And I also have a reoccurring uh, payment of $40 per week. So every Wednesday, $40 goes in, and eventually it, it, it occurs. So let me see if I can find a way to show you guys what this all looks like. Okay, performance, boom, here we go. So as you can see, I've had this for quite some time and it shows you in here like how much I've occurred. So at one point, the most I had in here was about $2,200 and I used that as a down payment on the Jeep. 
actually, it was either a down payment or it was a lift kit. I kind of forget. Uh, realistically, the next one was probably a lift kit when it was at $1,500. But point being, this accrues money. You forget about it. For months at a time, I forget I have this and then I'll check it and I have seven, six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars in there. That's Jeep parts. So this really helps you kind of just, again, set up that savings account that you forget about it. Because in this day and age, the more we forget about something, keep something out of sight, out of mind, the better we do. It does pay dividends. I've never had enough money in it to really pay me a lot of dividends. Again, I don't use this necessarily as an investment. I use it kind of as a savings account. Uh, I saw Graham Stephan, if you don't know who that is, he's like an uh, investment guru, one of the financial people uh, on YouTube. He does very well for himself. He suggests having a minimum $3,000 in an Acorns account for it to actually like work for you. Again, I'm not trying to get it to work for me to make me more money. I'm just using it as money I didn't know I had. So I can then go, maybe you want to use it for a trip. Maybe it's not a GP. Now, I did maybe forget to mention at this point in time that this app does require a $1 a month maintenance charge. So that's kind of important to know, a $1 month that. maintenance charge. And I will link, so this app does referral rewards. So if you sign up, you get five bucks. If you use my code, I get five bucks. So win-win. But um, this is a plug. I'll just put it down there so you can get a free five bucks if you decide to do it. But this helps me a lot, honestly. I've bought my lift kit from it. My lift kit cost me like, I don't know, 2200 bucks or something like that. I put a down payment on the Jeep for it. That was a couple grand that it helped me put the down payment down. Um, and a few other things. This has really helped me along the way when it comes to building the Jeep. You obviously then have the tried and true tra tactic of using your tax return. Now, I know in this bracket of age group of people, a lot of you guys still have your parents claiming your taxes, which is fine. That works for some people. Uh, I think I started claiming my taxes when I turned like 17 or 18, so I, I was doing it on my own ever since then. But I would use that money and put that toward Jeep parts, and I still sometimes do this to this day, unless I'm trying to like pay off a debt or something. Like uh, I haven't been buying Jeep parts too much right now because I'm trying to buy a house, so I've been saving up for that, and that's why there's been less Jeep content on the channel as of late, especially in the last couple months where I haven't been posting too much. That's why I'm trying to find workaround videos and things that I can do. And that's kind of what this one is. So I can talk to you guys, I can post something and then I can, you know, I show you how I afford kind of my Jeep parts. Um, another thing is find supplemental income streams, YouTube channel, Instagram, something along those lines. Uh, there's several other ways you can do this where you just find other ways that you can make money besides your nine to five job or whatever. Um, there's, you just gotta have the ambition to go do it. Uh, thinking off the top of my head, thinking off the top of my head, maybe you start doing, you're a college kid. Maybe you start delivering DoorDash. Um, you can also on Acorns, they have this thing called found money where right now, if you sign up to be a DoorDash driver, just using that as an example, they'll give you a free 30 bucks and they'll throw that in your Acorns account. So it's a free 30 bucks for signing up to be a DoorDash driver. And you could do a DoorDash driver, like, I don't know, one day a week and use all of that money towards your Jeep parts. And then realistically, if you make enough money doing DoorDash, then you can use your gas tax write-off because you're using your gas to make money. So as long as you have a good accountant who can write off your tax, your gas and you keep the receipts for it, you're good to go. And that's a tax write-off. So that's another thing you guys could think of when trying to find other ways and more creative ways to pay for your Jeep parts or get your Jeep parts to pay for you, which is kind of what I do with this YouTube channel. Definitely like DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, all of that stuff is a great, great idea to start. Also driving for Uber and or um, Lyft, that's, that's another good idea. You're using your Jeep anyways. You, we don't mind driving our Jeeps, especially if we're in that younger age bracket, we probably have older Jeeps, so we care less about the mileage as opposed to like a brand new vehicle. Why not drive for Uber or, uh, or Lyft and make a couple extra bucks? That extra bucks you can then put directly towards your Jeep parts. You can just take that money and put it aside and maybe you put it in your Acorns account. Maybe you, that's the money you withdraw and you put it under your mattress or some, something like that. And uh, that's what you use to finance your Jeep parts. It's your Uber and your Lyft or maybe it's your DoorDash or maybe you do sign up with Acorns. Point being, there's plenty of other ways besides just working your nine to five that helps you afford a hobby like this. My biggest, biggest piece of advice do not put it on a credit card unless you have the money to pay for it biggest piece of advice credit cards are great especially if you have a cash rewards credit card 
Uh, I have a cash awards credit card. I put almost everything on the cash awards credit card and then it pays me like, I don't know, two or 3% back. And it literally turns into money that I can then put in my savings account or take it out and put it back towards the Jeep. I pay that off every single month in full. If you're not planning on paying off that card in full at the end of every single month, do not put big purchases on a credit card. You're just gonna hurt yourself in the future, you're gonna hurt your credit score, and you're gonna hurt yourself when you go to buy a new vehicle or when you go to buy a house or something along those lines. Don't fall into the trap of putting everything on a credit card. I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, do not do that. Bad idea, especially when it comes to something like this that's not like a necessity. These are wants, these aren't necessities. Now I'm not trying to go off on a financial tangent of like, you know, being a financial planner and all that other stuff, because that's not who I am and that's not what I do. But the biggest piece of advice, don't just start slapping G parts on the credit card. It's really not gonna benefit you in the long term. Wait until you can pay for it outright, pay for it outright, and then you'll be fine. I promise you, you might have to wait a little bit longer, but you're probably gonna thank me in the long run. Those are kind of the biggest tips, guys, that I have for you right now along this topic. So if you haven't already, please like the video if you liked it, thought my tips were kind of good. Maybe you have a couple tips you wanna leave in the comment section below, or maybe you think I'm full of crap and you wanna tell me, because I know no matter what I say, those of you who think I'm full of crap haven't made it this far in the video, and you're already talking crap anyways, so that is besides the point. But, hit the like button, I do really appreciate it. it helps me out in the YouTube algorithm, it helps us grow the channel so I can make more videos for you guys. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section, share the video, and please subscribe to the channel. That is probably the biggest show of support that I can see if you guys like what I do or not is subscribing to the channel. Other than that, guys, if you don't have anything for me, I don't have anything for you. I hope you have a good one and take it easy. Yeah. It's that first day of first grade, that cute girl, your third day, that backpack, that snapback you've had since the third.